of the Lord. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes this morning to praise God, to fill, be filled with joy and laughter, and yes, even to get a special message today, not only from our Hallelujah kids, but also from our very own, our very own Bishop, uh, the Right Reverend Lawrence Provenzano, Bishop of the Diocese of Long Island. And he'll be preaching for us today. So we want to give God thanks today for all of you who are here. We want to praise God for all of our first responders, those in our military. Thank you so much this Memorial Day uh, after weekend. But we celebrate you for the whole weekend. We thank God for your service, which is why we still have our flags up. We begin our service this morning, as we always do on Pentecostal Sunday, worshiping God and filling our hearts with joy. As we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Open our lips, O Lord. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to exalt us to that place where our Savior Jesus Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it 
that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35 and 37. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah! Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Go. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had been locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed him their hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today our guest preacher, 
who is also our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Lawrence C. Provenzano. He will be giving us a special message on this Pentecost Sunday, a Sunday in which we receive the Holy Spirit, a Sunday in which we receive the peace of God, a Sunday in which you will be blessed in a way that you never have imagined. So let us turn our attention now to our bishop, the holy man of God in the Diocese of Long Island, the White Reverend Lawrence Provenzano. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Throughout my ordained ministry, I have loathed any attempt by preachers using themselves as an example in a sermon. Today, I will do that loathsome thing because my prayer and preparation for preaching today leave me little choice. And so I beg your indulgence. In the mid-1970s, I was a member of a cloistered religious community. I lived in Eremo Beato Bernardo, the hermitage of Blessed Bernard. The monastery was named for the local Capuchin Franciscan friar who lived in the town in the hills in Corleone, Sicily, who had been named by the church as Blessed. I had entered the community to live a monastic expression of the Franciscan rule, to escape the world in that classic intent of monastic life, fuga mundi, to flee the world. I was convinced of a religious vocation and sought as a very young man to escape the distractions, curiosity, and the work of the world outside the walls of the monastery. In an effort to learn, to pray, to study, to have union with God. I lived that cloistered life with 30 other brothers for nearly two and a half years, until one warm, sunny, late April day, when I experienced a personal, but very real, Pentecost event. It was siesta time, and as I often did not sleep at midday, I would climb up on the inside wall of the monastery and look out over the small city of Corleone. This day in the stillness of a warm afternoon, I eavesdropped on a conversation on the street below the wall. A father washing his car, talking, actually negotiating with his teenage children about the use of their money, priorities of their family life, and the need of the children to live within the family budget. That was a Pentecost moment for me. Everything changed that afternoon and in the days that followed. The disciples were locked away for fear of the world following the events of Good Friday and the days that followed. They were bewildered, scared, and not knowing what to do next. The risen Christ comes and stands in their midst and says, peace be with you. And as we have learned and heard from the Acts of the Apostles, having been encouraged by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they emerged from that locked room, preaching in various tongues and giving witness to the reality of the resurrection. Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the church. It may be an oversimplification, but actually describes that movement of the Holy Spirit that released the disciples and empowered them 
to reveal the redemption of all of humanity found in the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we have lived through the past 12 weeks of quarantine and isolation for fear of the illness associated with COVID-19, the pandemic, each of us, I am certain, have longed for a return to what we believe to be normal. But we have discovered, we have discovered, haven't we, that our way of being, the craziness of our existence, the way in which we carried on in life was not normal at all. We have learned some significant lessons about our place in life, the importance of the people around us each day that we often take for granted, the choices we make, the assumptions we carry, the evaluation of what we believe is essential. We all now understand that what we imagined about the priorities of our common life might have been a little too self-serving and a little too exclusionary to actually be called common life. It appears that social distancing and a bit of isolation has taught us each how to appreciate the gift and genuine need of each other in reality. We are relearning the holiness of the human family. We're having a Pentecost event as a people anew. As members of the church, the people of God, we know well that the celebrations of the liturgical calendar are never ever meant to be solely occasions to recall a past historical or biblical event. The incarnational theology that forms our liturgical and sacramental life dictates that our celebrations encompass the real time experience of the people of God. Today, this celebration of Pentecost provides us the opportunity to be renewed by God's Holy Spirit, not in wishful thinking, not in a delusion of returning to some misconceived normalcy, but in holy expectation of God acting in our time to move the church into the moments of terror and fear so many of us are experiencing and transforming this experience into a time of deep and abiding peace that God brings to us, breathes on us, and creates in us to move out beyond the walled in reality to a transformed movement of sharing Jesus' love and compassion with a hurting and confused world. The Pentecost event, as recorded in scripture, did not change the world outside that locked room. It created the church to serve and help transform the world outside the locked room. Out of our deep prayer, our liturgical and sacramental life, the church must, absolutely must, serve the world, challenge the world, and overcome the sin and selfish greed that infects the world as a means of further breathing the peace and wholeness that was the original intent of the creator and sealed for all of humanity in the birth, life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That April day in Corleone was a Pentecost event in which the common 
everyday experience of a family was the vehicle by which the Holy Spirit moved my heart and informed my will to understand that what I firmly believed was the direction of my life for which I sacrificed so much else in my life was misguided and not of God, or at least not totally on mark for what God had in store for my life. There have been many Pentecost events in the over 45 years that have followed, all of which I remember and for which I give thanks this day as they find their place in this great solemnity of the church. I pray this is true for you as well, that this feast of Pentecost, this feast of the ministry of the church may include all those moments and times in your life in which God has created rich, unexpected, unexpected experiences of grace, transformation, and maybe healing in your life. I invite you to look for them in your own life, especially in the places where you are locked away in fear or in complacency. I invite you to embrace and not merely endure this moment in which we are all apart in the midst of this pandemic and pray that the holy spirit breathe upon you your family and your loved ones the people all around you to renew the face of the earth and to recognize the face of god and the will of god in all things common and holy. Amen. We thank God for that wonderful message from Bishop Provenzano. Thank you so much for being our voice today and reminding us of what this holiday and the strength of God can do in our lives when we operate in faith. Let us now reaffirm our faith and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer to God our concerns for the church and the world with the humility Jesus showed in his life and death. That our celebration of the Paschal ministry will deepen our faith and lead us to be unafraid to share the good news of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will seek nonviolent ways to settle differences for peace throughout the world, and for an end to war, violence, prejudice, and hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That led by your spirit through these holy days, we may deepen our desire to empty ourselves in service to our troubled world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That 
all who are sick and all who have asked for our prayers, especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus. May they find comfort and hope in the image of Christ, the suffering servant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. May they rest in the arms of a loving God for their families and friends, that their grief may not overwhelm them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our presiding Bishop Michael, Lawrence Provenzano, the Bishop of the Diocese of Long Island, assisting Bishops Daniel, Gerlin, and William, and for our military and first responders. We also remember today, as we pray, those whom God has called home, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. glory. Especially Kenneth Barnes, Earl of Jones, Reverend James Saunders, Gladys Lewis, Rich Fellmore, Gabriella Gale, Antonio Archer, Little Richard, Ronald Hurdle, Yancey Patterson, Noel and Eva Beard, Bonnie Dudley, Carrie Michael Bradley, Edwin McDonald, Bernice Thompson, James Barron, Sidney King, Sheila Williams, Noel Davis, Reverend Antonio Checo, Reverend David Gates, Reverend William Watson, Teresita Watson, Brian Jackson, Rhonda and Tom's father. We pray for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones who have been called home suddenly especially Elsie Jackson and family, Audrey Lee and Barbara and family for Brian, Roy Watkins and family for Terry Cena, Reverend Karen Davis for Noel, Silly Justice for her brother Ronald, Deirdre Bonds for her uncle, Kenneth, Leon, Leona Gale, and Beverly Woods for Gabrielle and Baby that was called home, Claudius and Janet, for her grandfather and father, Dorothy Patterson for her sister, Christopher Hoffer for his partner, Vera McDonald for her husband, James Chris and James III Williams for their grandmother and mother, Warren family for Noel and Eva. We pray for the President of the United States, Donald Trump, all government officials, local officials, that God would soften their hearts to lead the good American people to a healthy life and a safe and healthy community. We pray also for all of those who are sick and shut in in our community, especially Pat, Joan, Buddy, Toy, Anne, Louise, Dorothy, Elise of the NYPD, Emmett, Dolores, Ian, Deidre, Roy, Marie, Mary, Diane in Ohio, Alice in Virginia, Marcus, Nicole, Janie. We ask that God would continue to bless them and heal them and keep them as they continue to heal under the shadow of God's hand. We ask you also to give thanks to God as we pray for those who are on the front lines who have given their time and effort during this crisis. We give God thanks for our military. We pray also for the protection of them and their families, especially Bogdan, Latasha, Camilla, Winona, Dr. Jamie, Christine Gordon, Linda Levy, Suzette Lawrence, Darren Jenkins, Sharon Bennett, Ilyanye Longjohn, Dr. Rainsford, we especially remember those who are in our military on the front lines caring medically for our men and women who protect us. We especially remember Jam Jamal Wigglesworth, Lieutenant Tommy Flesher, Staff Sergeant James Lassiter Jr., Christine, Christian Ewell, and Hilton Walls. May God continue to bless them, protect them, to keep them as they protect and keep others in this time of crisis. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, 
We may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom all of our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I want you to turn to somebody in your house, even if it's your dog, your cat, or in the mirror, and say, God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you this morning, Miss Bob. Peace and Lord be with you. God mother. bless you. And God's peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. of their birth. We want to especially wish our May uh, folks celebrating their birthday a happy birthday, uh, especially remembering Dorothy and Gertrude, Latasha, Charmaine, James, Corinne, Joy, uh, and all of you who are celebrating your birthdays in May. Happy, blessed birthday to you. And may God add a, a blessing of joy, peace, love, laughter, and understanding in your life for the coming year. Our service continues with our Holy Eucharist. This Holy Eucharist is being offered up once again in celebration of not only our May birthdays, but all of you who continue to operate in faith and know that God is a God that's going to show up on time in this time of crisis. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church 
the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel of all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We, celebrate the memorial, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive these holy sacraments and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And on the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art who in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food of the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we've come to that time in our mass and our service in which it's time for our Sunday school. Gather the kids around because our Hallelujah Kids and our Sunday school have a special message and a great guest with us today. You're going to love it. Get them around because here comes the Hallelujah Kids in St. John the Evangelist Sunday School in five. to raise your right hand, raise your right hand kids, and repeat after me. Much prayer, much, prayer. Prayer. much power, much prayer. little prayer, little, prayer. little, power. little power, no prayer, no, prayer. No, power. no power. Teach us Lord, Teach us, Lord. How, to pray. how to pray in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so today we have with us Lindsay, and she has just recently graduated from college. And this is. Let me talk a little bit, Kelly. Okay, go ahead. This is Pentecost Sunday, so we're going to talk to Lindsay right now, and she's going to tell us about her personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and with God. Come on, Lindsay, talk to us. Yeah! yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi, Linda. It's nice to meet you, too. And with us is Ellie. Hi. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Lindsay. My name is Sam E. And my name is Emily. And where's and and I'm a and I'm a I'm his sis, and she's my sister. Nice to meet you both. Okay, Lindsay. So we know that you graduated from college. That's really great. Congratulations. Yeah, that was really, really great. How does it feel to be a college graduate? It feels really weird. Does it? Yeah. So how are you making out in this COVID-19 crisis? Did you have to leave school? Yeah, I had to leave school right after spring break. So our spring break happened right before this started, and we didn't get to go back. 
So I've been home since. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what have you been doing? Homework. But now that I'm graduated, I'm applying to jobs. How's that going? It's interesting. There's not a lot open. Okay, I guess in these times, it's a little bit difficult with everybody being closed. But you're hopeful though, right? Yep. Yeah, you'll find a job, Lindy. Don't worry. So we're going to talk about the lessons for today. Um, did you read Acts? Yes, I did. What did you think about it? It was very interesting. How was it interesting? Did you see where the Holy Spirit came and rested upon the disciples and everybody understood what they were saying in their own language? Did you understand that? Yes, it was nice to know that sometimes it doesn't matter what language we're speaking for us to understand each other. Oh, okay. Well, knowing that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, how do you think that affected them later? I think it really impacted them and changed the way they saw other people that looked different or acted differently than they did. Okay. Um, do you think the Holy Spirit has filled you too? Yes. How? Um, going, traveling and being different places, you don't always get to see everyone and their different cultures, but going away and being with the Holy Spirit, you see everyone and un under gain a better understanding of everything. Where'd you go? I've been to London and I went to Belize this past winter. Whoa, which one did you find the most interesting or the most difficult? Um, it's a little bit of both. In Belize, it was a smaller group that I went with and it was a little bit more difficult to eat because I have a lot of allergies. In London, it was different because everyone was scared of different things. They had like recently had like a different things. Oh, like here. Everybody seems to be scared here too. Mm hmm So in Acts, oh, I'm sorry, in Corinthians, I we read that the that the Holy Spirit gives people a lot of gifts. Can you tell me what you think your gifts are? I think my gifts are my kindness and enthusiasm for new things. Like I love trying new things, even though I can't eat new foods a lot of the time. I love traveling and trying to understand different cultures. How will you use your gifts the Holy Spirit gave you? Um, one day I hope to travel and teach in different countries. So I hope to use them to learn about my new students. Do you speak a foreign language? I can understand basic Spanish. <laughs> like, hola! Yeah, I can do hola and hi. My name is Lindsay. Where do you want to live to teach in, in another country? Um, my ultimate goal is to move to New Zealand, but I would be okay with traveling anywhere to teach. New Zealand? Where is that? Um, it's right below Australia. It's a very small country. It consists of two islands, and that's it. Wow. Yeah. So, you is one of your gifts teaching, too? Yes, I love teaching and what being with children. And, and how old would the kids be? Um, well, I'm going to get my master's in early childhood, so the kids would be from around Ellie's age to, like, sixth or seventh grade. And I hope to teach all subjects. My math, my degree I have right now is in history, so I really love history, but I want to teach everything. Ooh, that is so amazing, Lindsay. Isn't that great, Groovy? Yeah, she seems pretty smart. Yeah, even great. <laughs> yeah, isn't it great, Ellie Bailey? Uh -huh. Well, Ellie Bailey has a knock-knock joke for you. You want to hear it? Yes, I do. Okay, Ellie, tell me to do your knock-knock joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Winshu. Winshu who? Wouldn't you like some ice cream? Yes. It was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you want to know from us, Lindsay? No, I'm good. <laughs> This was oh, fun. We're so happy that you could be with us and talk to us. Yeah. Do you have a boyfriend? Nope. I'm looking for one because I'm available. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet? Okay, well, let me know and I'll be your first choice, okay? Okay.
Remember my name is Groovy. <laughs> okay, Groovy. Okay, Lindsay, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, Lindsay, we'll look forward to seeing you again, okay? Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. We love you. Bye. 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 We want to thank you, Lindsay, for being with us and sharing with us your personal thoughts and your relationship with God. That there's a lot going on in this country now, so we want all of us to pray and ask that peace may take over our country where there's no more violence and senseless, needless killing. So make sure that you pray for one another. So, one more thing, and these times I want you to remember to wear your mask, stay six feet apart, and wash your hands ten times. Okay. Don't talk to me, Groovy. Hey, hey okay, Groovy. Okay, that's it. So we'll see you next week, and we'll have another special guest to talk about. the Holy Spirit and remember to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. For God is always with you and remember us in your prayers. Don't forget to send in your donations. God bless you and have a wonderful, blessed week.
mouth My Lord spoke Out of his mouth came fire and smoke I looked around me It was so fine 